Give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. How many of you believe in God's blessings and God's provisions for your life? The Bible says that you are partakers of my grace. How many of you believe there is a grace in this house? There is a grace of prosperity in this house. There is a grace to be debt free. If you are sitting here under the sound of my voice, you will be debt free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But the Bible says that you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless. Amen. I'm excited because escape is coming up next week, Sunday. Hallelujah. And it's another opportunity for us to do something for God. And I believe as we work for God, as we serve him, God will definitely bless us. Amen. We have powerful and amazing testimonies today. It is a great thing to serve the Lord. Many people think it's vain to serve God, but the Bible says, I have not asked the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. You will never serve God in vain. You are receiving a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together. Let's receive Prosper Chapu as he shares the first testimony for today. Oh, do it better for him. I can't hear you clapping. The louder your clap, the quicker your testimony. Amen. Prosper, tell us what has God done for you. Hallelujah. Amen. My name is Prosper Chapu from Pasa, a village in the Votanov. One of the gardens. And what has God done for you? I, in 2015, I came to Accra, having nowhere to sleep, having nowhere to lay my head. I came to hustle in Accra. But when I came to Accra, I was fortunate, and then I, I found the first love church. And then I gave my life to Christ. I started working in the church. I joined the gardeners. After the gardeners, I was made to start a bustle. After that, I joined... I became a bar center leader, and by the grace of God, I didn't have anywhere to lay my head. And in my deep poverty, I was still serving God. I started bashing people from Ashama all the way from Ashama to First Love Center, and God has transformed my life during these years. And I've gotten, through that, I've gotten a place to sleep. It wasn't a problem to get a place to sleep after. And then, one day, as I joined the church and I was working for God, that a door was open for me to meet the prophets. And I, uh, Reverend Ajiman into, uh, brought me to meet the prophet. For so you went for a counseling session with yes, the prophet? Yes, yes. And what, you were, you were a basenta leader at that time? Yes, please. So you had the opportunity to go for a counseling session with the yes, prophet? Yes, please. And what happened then? And prophet, when we, we, we got into, uh, prophet asked me where I'm I from. I, I, I said it. He said, my level of education, I said a diploma. He asked me, why did you, and then he asked me the, the type of course I did. He said, why did you do such a course? And there was a lot of reasons to that, so I just told him one of the reasons. And I said, okay, okay, okay. And then later on, he, he didn't really say that I should continue school or not, but I received a key from there that I knew I, should, I have to continue from the, school. From the, from the reaction he had yes, when yes, he mentioned Yes, yes, from the reaction, I knew that I have to continue school. But he didn't say anything. And then... I also didn't have a job, and I don't know how I'm going to get money to continue this school. How am I going to do it? So I was a bit confused. Before you left the office, yes, what happened? Yes, before I left the office. Then he prayed for us. He laid his hands and then prayed for me. And after I left, uh, a, a mate in school, he called me and said, oh, uh, am I working? I said, no. Then he said, oh, there's a so-so-and-so job. I oh, should, I should give come. the Lord a mighty shout of praise. But even the work I'm even doing and the type of uh, salary I receive, my, sal my certificate cannot be compared to. And I realized I was from the prayers that the prophet prayed for me. Wow. And then after that, I knew that I have to continue school. Reverend Joshua, I had the opportunity sometimes to meet Reverend Joshua. He asked me, are you? And then after I was talking, and then he said, your understanding is too low. You need to go back to school. Then I was wondering, I said, ah, so what am I going to do in school? So I was confused. One day I was listening to uh, prophet one, uh, preaching. Yeah, prophet preaching in one of the camps. And then he said, in it, I heard him saying that uh, one of the two most top uh, courses in act was uh, administration and law. So I decided that, okay, I'm going to do administration. And then I proceeded to do my degree in Gimpa, and now I'm now offering a degree program in Gimpa. And, and you're, you're telling me you come from Pasa? Yes. Has anybody in your family ever been to the university? Honestly, I'm the first to be in the university, practically for my family. Yes, practically. And you're telling me there's another blessing that you received from the last 
last time. Yes, last year, uh, last year, I didn't, where I was staying was so bad that I was believing God for a place. So I decided to write on the covenant uh, form, I wrote that, God, please, just give me a better place As to I stay. serve you. Yes, as, as I, I bring people you. to church. Yes. As I bask people yes. to church. Yes. Give me a better place to stay. Give me a better what place. What happened after that swollen Sunday? After the swollen Sunday, I went to work and a friend of mine took me to a place. I told him that I, where I am is too bad. I need a place. And then he said, okay, there's some government apartments here. So he's going to take me there. And then he, they have offered me a place now. And then I don't even pay. Oh, give it. the Lord a mighty pay. shout of praise. Everything. If you serve the Lord, he will bless you. I see God giving you a down payment of the blessings of your service to him this week. If you believe it, say, I receive it. Put your hands together for that powerful testimony. And let's welcome Pastor Harrell Noama to share his testimony of how God has blessed him as he began serving God practically in this house. Amen. Next week, you have to arrive in church with your bus, with your Uber, with your taxi. And as you do that, I believe God is blessing you. Amen. Pastor Harrell, tell us what has God done for you. Amen. Amen. Um, my name is Harrell. I'm an overseer and uh, Pastor Solomon Odame at the East Legon Church. Um, I'm in charge of a center at Mempasem. Now, when I, my wife and I got married, we had a number of challenges. And um, or as we also had things that we desired for. And um, it did seem so far. Such as? Such as um, a car. I mean, the reason why I needed a car is because my wife was expecting. And uh, where we stay is quite far. So how to bring her from home to the hospital was a problem. But one day... And what else were you believing God for? I was also believing God to move out of um, my rented apartment and into a home that I built by God's grace. Um, so one day, um, whilst having my quiet time, I, I was thinking about these things. They were heavy on my mind and my heart. And as I pondered on them, I just felt the Holy Spirit tell me to focus on loving him and serving him. So I made up my mind that I'll find a way to do this. Because, um, I mean, I had been in church and I had I'd heard that he preach. And I really wanted to do it, but I didn't know how to. So when I, I felt the Holy Spirit say this, I said, no, I have to overcome all my reasons. So that Sunday, I, I came to church. I saw Reverend Joshua, and I asked him to help me find a place to work. So he placed me in one of his town bus centers. That is um, under Derek at the town center, uh, TF. Now I was there, and I was helping. So as I continued to work, one day I received a message that I had been transferred to join um, Reverend Nakoja. And so I moved. And under Reverend Nakoja, I was made a bus center leader. So you started busing people to I church? I started busing people. I remember how happy I was on my first Sunday when I came with three people to church. I came and I thanked Reverend Nakoja. And then he told me that it's the opportunity that the, the, the prophet has given. That's allowing all of us to have such a place. And what, what difference, what, what blessings did you notice in your now, life after you started busing? Yes, busing? now, as I started to focus on working for the Lord, I, one of the things that happened was a week before my wife went into labor, I had a call from my sister who said she had received a visa to join her husband in the U.S. And so she was giving me her car. To use. <laughs> hey, are you sitting? Give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. A week to the delivery. A week to the delivery. A and week. you said having a car was so far from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so far. I mean, we, I tried to get some money, but it still wasn't adding up. Your sister called you to come for the car. My sister called me to come for the car a week before. A week before. I mean, I was afraid because I was thinking if she goes into labor during the day, traffic will be a problem. I mean, you know the Legon traffic. And if she goes into labor in the night, how am I going to get a taxi at that time and all that? So and what, else, what, what other blessing have you seen? Um... Okay, so as I continue to serve the Lord, also one day I met Reverend Akoja, and he asked me, Kweku, are you building? And then I said, no, I, I desire land, but I don't even have. Then he asked me to go find the land and then build. And supernaturally, supernaturally, in a matter of two weeks, I had received money from all kinds of places, and I purchased... You will receive money from all kinds of places. The Bible says that 
those that reap the harvest, they will receive wages. Wow. Yeah. I, I see somebody paying you for work that you don't know the work you've done. Yeah. yeah. And we, I bought, I purchased the land at our dream location. That is on the Equiapem Ridges, two plots of land. And I believe God that as I continue to serve him, he is going to bless me and the grace in the house is going to work for me so that I'll finish the building and move in. You will and, finish in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so as um, Swollen Sunday is next, coming next week, I just want to encourage everyone here that Matthew 633 really works. Every one of us should get involved in this work. Bring a, two souls. Bring a bus. Call your friends, call your, your, your loved ones, your family. Bring them all and, 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 and watch and see what the Lord will do in Hallelujah. your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together for that powerful testimony. And let's welcome Albert Lamte as he shares his testimony. Do it better for him. If you serve the Lord. Oh, I can't hear you. If you serve the Lord. Now let me find some more excited people. If you serve the Lord. Receive your blessings this week. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to thank God for such an opportunity to give a testimony. So, um, last, last time, the Swollen Sunday, um, great, invitation. great invitation, we had an opportunity by um, Reverend Joshua. He asked us to write on our covenant form what we need. And I needed a job very much. So, I wrote that, um, I wrote on the slip a job that I needed. And also, when I submit, I realized that um, I have not signed. So if you are a lawyer, you realize that um, whatever you've written there does not count, but God is not looking at that. Amen. So I tried to bus my people from Bowie. I'm about central leader you from... You decided to bring people to church from, from Bowie. Bowie. Yes, please. How many people did you bring to church on Swollen Sunday? 35. 35. Yes, How many people did you, do you usually bring to church? 17, 18. But on 30. that day, you brought 35. So what did you do to bring 35 people to church? So um, my center leader, Pastor Richmond, encouraged us to invite more people so that we can be able to reach our targets. Wow. And we also prayed more. So um, fast forward, on the 22nd of March, um, Reverend Joshua came to Bawe. And during the service, he said that he has... Um, he feels like praying for people for favor. So I dis when I heard he was coming, I decided that whether he's coming to pray for um, even pregnant women, I have to see him. So I tried as much as possible to meet him, and he prayed for me. And the following day was a Saturday. I came for Atmosphere. Reverend Frank also prayed for me. Um, on the Monday, I had a call from a company I sent my CV to two years ago. How many years ago? Two years ago. That was after school, after UPSA. You sent an application to that company for a job two, two years, years ago. ago. Yes, please. And they hadn't called you. No, no. So they called me on the 25th, which was a Monday. Wow. 25th of March, they called me. So the man asked me to come immediately. So um, that Monday, I went to the place in Tema. And he didn't ask me for anything, no interview, nothing. He just said, start work. So my question is, this one, is it accidental? Is it coincidental? Did it just happen? Then why are you sitting down like that? Give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. I see something confusing happening in your life this week. In Jesus' might. So where you stand? Were you surprised? I was very surprised because I've not seen this before. And I want to encourage all of you that... Um, your certificate doesn't do much because as I stand here by the grace of God, um, I hold an associate um, um, marketing certificate in the UK, but it doesn't count. It's the favor in the house that will make things work for you. I believe if we are able to bring people next week, whatever you are desiring for, God will bring it to your doorstep. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for that powerful testimony. And a final testimony from Judith. Do it better for Judith. She's in the Greater Love Gospel Choir. Communion staff, pardon me. Sorry, Jane, what has God done for you? I want to thank the Lord for how my brother, my younger brother, got a job after the Great Invitation Sunday. Wow. I'm Judith Anu from the Wisconsin Bar Center. 
Okay, um, two weeks before the Great Invitation Sunday, we were given covenant forms to fill. And on the forms, I wrote four requests I want God to do for me as I bring my two souls to church. And the last request was that my brother will get a job soon because he had finished school for about three years now. And he's been searching for a job everywhere, always complaining of how frustrated so he is. for her to put it as one of the four requests, you know that it was affecting her. It was affecting her. Yes. So you put it on as one of the four requests yes. that your brother should get a job. Yes. And what happened after the... So, as I brought my two souls to church, I was actually believing God so much, especially for that one. Yes. Where did you bring the two souls from? I brought them from Kaswa. Kaswa. Yes. Where do you stay? In Adan. You left Adan to Kaswa. Yes. That morning, I came from Adan to Kaswa and went to bring them to church. Wow. Yes. And what happened after that? On Monday, the next day after the Great Invitation Sunday, my brother called me that... Um, one of the places he had applied for a job to have called him to bring his certificate, which he forgot to add to the application forms. So as he was going to that school, he saw another school on the roadside and just decided by to... Chance. By chance. He just saw another he school. He just saw another school and decided to apply. So that evening, they called him to come for an interview the next day, which was Tuesday. When he went on Tuesday, it wasn't really an interview. It was like a discussion, a chat. And he was told he has the job, so he should start work immediately, that very Tuesday. And then he was sent to the office where the teachers sit. And he was given the classes he would teach, the subject he would teach. And he even started teaching that very day. And you said, how long had your brother been looking for work? For three years. And how many applications had he written? Several applications. And none of them was working? None of them. You see, when the people came to Jesus, they told Jesus that this person is worthy for something to be done for him. Because he has helped to build your church. So, something will be done for your family, for your children, for your brother, for your sister, for your wife. As you put your hands practically to God's work, as you find two souls, a bus, a bus center, as you do something for God's house, it will affect your whole family. Is it true or is it not true? It's very, very So, what do you have to tell true. them as we? I just want to encourage all of us. Next week is escape, the great escape. And as we serve the Lord, he's surely going to bless us. I want to thank our prophet and I want to thank all the pastors also for such an opportunity to serve God. Because this, the great invitation, I personally decided to be part of. Because a lot of swollen Sundays had passed by, but this particular, I said no. The way people are giving testimony, let me also bring souls and see if God will do the same for me. And he did it. Amen. Wow. If God did it for her, God will do it for you. If you are receiving a blessing soon, shout, Ear! Yeah.